Welcome to grade 10 NRF online. I'm going to try to offer an opportunity for you to learn and to continue. I know in our NRF class we have some keeners who are probably chomping at the bit to get something going here for, for math and I understand that and so I'm going to try to accommodate you as best we can in this uh, interesting and unique situation that we have found ourselves in. So just, uh, I know that what we were planning on doing at the, um, on the Friday that we had the snow day, we were going to have a test. So I thought what I do today is begin with a review of AN4 and AN5. So if you've got some paper there in your calculator, um, if I could get you to maybe copy down some stuff. Yes, I do have a chalkboard here in my in my kitchen. I know that's kind of odd to have a chalkboard in your kitchen. Usually it has something kind of cute on it like, you know, spring is here or something like that, but I'm going to be using it the best I can to offer you an opportunity to learn. So if you would just grab your uh, paper and you can um, copy this down and give it a try. See what you remember from nearly a month ago as it is now. This is completely optional, but I think that uh, you'll find that it's going to help you when you come back to the classroom, uh, feel a little more ready to go back at the math that you will have in your either Foundations uh, 11 or the Finance 11, whichever you end up taking. Um, so anyway, here you go. So give this a try. So in an effort to just keep moving along, I'm not going to actually stop the uh, and stop talking. And uh, what I would have you do is pause your your video and and give it a try, and then and then you'll see me offering the answers and the solutions here as as we go. So when we have uh, the directions to expand and simplify, and we have a binomial by a binomial like this one. Uh, we need to make sure that we're using the distributive property. So we're going to take the term that's in the first bracket, and we're going to multiply it by both of the terms in the second bracket. So it's going to be an x times an x, which is, of course, an x squared, and then an x times a 3, which is a 3x. And then I have to take the second term, and I have to multiply it by both of these as well. So 2 times an x is 2x, and then 2 times a 3 is going to be 6. And then what do I have to do at the very end? I need to make sure I collect up my like terms. Um, like terms are, de are defined by um, having the same variable along with the same uh, exponent. So uh, remember that the number that's in the front, called the coefficient, is not what we would use to determine whether or not it's going to be considered a, uh, a like term. So this right here, these two are going to be alike. They both have an x, and they're both to the degree of 1. So we're going to bring these two together. <clears throat> Conventionally, we write the highest degree first on down to the lowest. That constant at the end would have a degree of zero. Um, and so that's why he's going at the end. So the final answer ends up being x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then, of course, this is done in the same way. second one, 7 times x is a 7x, seven, 7 times 5. I almost wrote 12, but we know that the answer is 35 because it's not adding, it is multiplication. Got to collect these up, which now it is adding, so it's x squared plus 12x plus 35. Okay? All right. Now, let's try another one. Okay. 
And so you probably remember something similar to this on your target, um, or some of you would remember that. So if you have an x plus 3 and they're in the brackets and the exponent 2 is on the outside of the bracket, uh, why is that not equal to an x squared plus 9? Well, a lot of kids want to look for shortcuts, and I'm always talking about how in math you want to take shortcuts. That's a good thing to take a shortcut. Um, but you have to make sure that your shortcut is actually going to work. And so in order to um, use the exponent laws that we would have talked about last year, uh, you would have a product of a, of a power. Um, you would be able to take that exponent 2 and apply it to both terms on the inside if, in fact, what was inside the bracket was being multiplied together. But in this case, that's an adding expression. And so we can't just take the exponent 2 and, and apply it to both of uh, those terms. It, it's not that simple. And so what you would have to do is actually uh, break this apart and try it like this. I'll do it over here. And then use the distributive property. So you have an x times an x, which is an x squared x times a 3, which is a 3x, 3 times the x is 3x, and then 3 times the 3, which is 9. Collect up those two middle terms, they're both x's, so that's going to end up being a 6x. So x squared plus 6x plus 9. So um, I'm getting kind of low here on the board, I can see, but just to notice that that is not something that works to be able to just distribute the 2 to both of those terms and then solve because you end up missing that middle term of the 6x. So I'm going to continue on. Uh, I've got a, kind of a small chalkboard in this in my kitchen, so I have to kind of pause the video and, and uh, erase the board, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so let's continue on with uh, just slightly more challenging questions. And so we're looking at this first one. I'm going to let you go ahead and copy that down, and, we'll, and we will uh, give that a try. Okay, so hopefully you've paused it and, and, uh, and, and copied this down. So if we're going to take this now. We have a coefficient in front of our first term, which was different than the other two. So 2w times a w. You multiply the coefficient by this coefficient, which of course is a 1, and so it's going to end up being 2, and then you're talking about w squared. So if you're still struggling with that, then remember that you're multiplying the coefficients by the coefficients, and then the, the um, variables by the variables. And of course, if you have a w to, uh, that has no exponent on it, then it's an exponent of 1. And so this is going to be uh, w to the 1, w to the 1. And when you multiply two exponents, two variables, excuse me, what do you do with your exponents? You add them. So that's why it ends up being 2, uh, w to the 2. And then 2w times the negative 2 is a negative 4w. 3 times the w is a 3w. And 3 times the negative 2 is negative 6. And then, of course, these two are the same kind of terms. They both have a w. They both have a, an exponent of 1. And so we're going to just add the um, coefficients. And so negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1. So w squared, 2w squared, excuse me, minus w minus 6. Okay, next one. 4y times the 5y is a 20y squared. 4y times the 2 is going to be an 8y. Negative 6 times the 5y is a negative 30y. And negative 6 times the 2 is a negative 12. Collect up these two middle terms. You notice the pattern that that's usually the two middle terms. And then 8 subtract 30 is a negative 22y. Okay? And so that's kind of all I really gave you for questions that had to do with expanding and simplifying. I am going to attach a, a mock test. It is not going to be worth any marks. So just so that if, if any of you are still kind of confused as to how this works, um, you are not, you know, um, in danger of not moving on. Everyone is going to move on to um, next semester's either finance or um, 
the Foundations 11. Um, there are some of you who will be recommended for Accelerated still. So all of those things, you don't need to worry about that. That is not something that I want you to lose sleep over. And doing these uh, videos, these lessons that I'm going to offer is, is not meant to stress you out. It's, it's meant to help you stay fresh so that when the time comes that we finally get to go back to the classroom, you will feel like, okay, I haven't forgotten everything that we were doing in grade in grade 10. And I know this is a this is a stressful thing for some of you to not be able to get this uh, this math. Um, actually, as I think about who's in our class, I bet you there are many of you who really um, enjoy math and will will probably enjoy doing this um, these these lessons. So. Uh, Please know that uh, this is not meant to stress you out. It's meant to help alleviate your stress. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to put up some questions now for factoring. AN5 is the outcome where we're dealing with factoring and Basically, if you remember correctly, I said that the difference between expanding and factoring is that those are inverse operations. So you know of inverse operations such as adding, the inverse is to subtract, uh, the inverse to multiplying is dividing, the inverse to squaring is square rooting. And so expanding and factoring are inverse to one another. So that's why oftentimes when we get to the end of factoring, um, the question will say check by expanding because it wants you to say okay if you can factor it and then go in reverse you should be able to go right back to where you started so let's take a look at this first question um, when you look at 18 plus 9a b the expression what we're looking for first is that well first of all when we have two binomials that they're acting asking us to factor there's really only a couple different options that we're given and first of all would be common factoring and that should really be the question we ask ourselves every time we're looking at any kind of factoring is can I common factor first that should always be step number one and then step number two if we're come if we're factoring uh, binomials it would be okay are these perfect squares that are being subtracted and so when I look at 18 and uh, 9 a b first off I think oh well okay I can common factor so I'm going to take uh, both of these and I can divide them both by 9 so I'm going to take out a 9 there is not a variable that can come out of both of them because this one doesn't have any variables this one does it would have to be something that they had in common and they don't so they can only take out the 9 and then so basically what I do, once I figure out what the common factor is, I'm going to take that out, put it in the front, and then I'm going to divide both of these by that 9. So 18 divides by 9 gives me 2, and 9AB dividing by 9 gives me just a plain old AB. Okay, so once you get to that place and you should be asking yourself, can I go any further? Is it fully factored is often the way that you'll see it referred to. Um, sometimes teachers will mark it and, and they might give you a partial credit because you only partially uh, factored it. So when I look at a binomial that's left in that bracket, I would ask myself, can I factor it any further? First of all, have I, have I actually picked the greatest common factor between these two variable or between these two um, terms? And, and then so inside that two plus AB, yeah, I can, there's nothing that they have in common. And then I would also ask myself if, if what I had remaining, those binomials were both perfect squares. And of course, two and a, B or not. So I am done with that question. Okay, so then the next one, between a 7C minus 14, what can I take out of both of them? It would be a 7. And again, that's fully factored. And then between an A plus plus A, it's just a single A that will come out of both of them. A squared divided by A leaves you with an A, and an A divided by an A leaves you with a 1. Okay, so if they were to, if I were to check by expanding now, uh, I could go backwards, right? So nine times two is eighteen. Nine times AB is nine AB. Yep, that's that's right. And and I could do that same method with all of them. Now a lot of times, if there's a, a mistake that I saw some people making, it was that they were going through and factoring it and then immediately going right into checking by expanding. Remember, those are two different things. Oftentimes you would see, uh, if you look back in your notes, that I did the, the uh, factoring on one column and then I would move over to the right and I would do fact or checking by expanding 
over to the right because I want to make it clear that, that I understand that this is me factoring and then this is me checking it. And they're separate and, and distinct, okay? And now the bottom one I left, you're going to let you remember the bottom one. Uh, the bottom one is a question that you can do through using a shortcut. But first of all, you got to remember that in order to be able to do this, we're looking for two same numbers that multiply together to give me what? 18. And they have to both add together to give me the same two numbers have to add together to give me 9. Okay. And so this is kind of coming back to you now as a ringing a bell. So where did I come up with the 18 and where did I come up with the 9? Well, I take the number of the coefficient that's in front of my first term, which is a 1, and I times it by that constant. So 1 times 18. I'm looking for it again. This goes over to the side. This is not part of the question. It's me figuring out how to move forward. So 1 times 18 is 18. I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply together to give me 18, but yet the same two numbers have to add together to give me 9. Where did the 9 come from? It's the coefficient in front of that middle term. Okay. This um, shortcut that I'm showing you right now only works when the coefficient in front of that first term is a what? 1. Okay. That's the only time you can use this shortcut. So now once we've got to this place, we're going to have to sit here and figure out what are those two numbers that multiply together to give me 18, but yet add together to give me 9. And so you start going through and you think, okay, 1 times 18, yes, but they don't add together to give me 9. Uh, 2 times 9, no, I can't. they don't add together to give me 9 either. That won't work. Keep going. How about 6 and 3? Okay, yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? Okay, so 6 and 3... will add together to give me 9. Now keep in mind that there are negatives, if there were negatives that were involved in this, so if it was a negative uh, in front of this first term, then it would be a negative 18, and I'd be looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 18, and yet add together to give me 9. So just, I, I know that one's, that's kind of throwing that out there, and it's not exactly uh, going to, wouldn't work, but I wanted to point that out, that if it is a negative in front of that first term, you still have to use the negative to help you figure it out. It does matter. So then I set it up and my answer is going to be a binomial by a binomial. I take my term, that's my first and my first uh, of the three, and I'm going to, that's going to be a, the square root of that is going to be D, and so I'm going to put that in both boxes, or both brackets. And then now this is where I use this stuff that I just found over here. So one of them is going to be a plus six, and one of them is going to be a plus three. Do you suppose it matters if I put the plus 3 first and the plus 6 second? Is that going to matter? Well, no, because when you uh, check it by expanding, would it matter if you had the 3 in the first bracket and the 6 in the second? No, they would still end up uh, solving to have a solution of d squared plus 9d plus 18. Okay, I'm going to pause the, the video here and again erase my board and then I'm going to keep going with a few more challenging questions for... Uh, factoring. Okay, so I've got a few of our last questions on uh, the board here. So when I look at this first one, it is a binomial, and what I told you at the beginning is still true here. You need to make sure that you uh, common factor if you can. So when I look at an e squared minus 9, uh, there is nothing that can come out of both of those. So that doesn't mean that I can't factor it. It just means I can't common factor it. So I need that. That's always step number one, and then I go to the next step. And so in, I said to you, the next thing when I'm looking at two, uh, a two-term uh, expression called a binomial, I need to see, is are these both of these terms perfect squares? And so when I look at an e squared, of course it is. How would you know if a variable... Like, what are you looking for as an exponent to see if it's a perfect square? You're looking for an even number, right? And so then, uh, and then 9, of course, is, is a perfect square as well. And the fact that these are being subtracted makes all the difference. This won't work if it is being added. If this was an adding in between the two, if it was an e squared plus 9, you would write not factorable. It is, you cannot factor it. It is not, not able to be done. Okay, so... I look at this one right here. When I have a difference of squares, that's what this is called. I take a bracket and a bracket, take the square root of the first one. It's an e. It goes in the spot, first spot, and then the square root of the second one, which is a three, 
And then do you remember what happens in between the two? One is a plus and one is a minus. Okay, so, and if you were to take the time right now, maybe even pause your video and check that by expanding, you would see that what ends up happening is that middle two terms of a positive 3e and a negative 3e would actually cancel each other out, which is why it goes back to an e squared minus 9. Okay, um, this next one right here is not one we can take a shortcut on. First of all, it's a trinomial. Um, so with the trinomial, we did one, but the first term had a coefficient of 1. This one doesn't. It has a 6. And so I can't use that shortcut. So I'm going to still do it in a very similar way, but now I'm going to use decomposition. So I'm going to take that 6, I'm going to multiply it by the negative 2, and I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 6 times negative 2 is a negative 12. And then what is the co coefficient in front of that middle term? It's a negative 1. Here's a perfect example of how it absolutely matters that it's negative. That part is going to matter. It's going to factor in, or excuse the play on words there, it's going to play in to how we determine what two numbers we're, we're looking for that give me, multiply together, give me a negative 12, but yet add together to give me a negative 1. Okay, so negative 12 times 1, that wouldn't work. Uh, negative 6 times 2, that wouldn't work. Um, how about negative... 3 times 4. Well, you're really, um, we're really getting close, aren't we? But it would have to be a negative 4 times the 3. Why is that? Because when I add them, they have to give me a negative 1. And so it matters which one has the negative sign on it. It does matter. Okay, so I can't do the shortcut of just bracket and bracket and, and, and away I go. It doesn't work like that. So instead, I take this first term... I copy that down, and this is why it's called decomposition, because this middle term gets decomposed, or another way of wording that is broken down into these two uh, numbers that we just found. So we take this negative, set, uh, negative s, and we call it four, negative 4s, four positive 3s. Do you see how these two things actually add together to give you that value? That's what we're calling it a decomposition. We're decomposing that middle term. Then I have to write down that last term. Now, I'm going to go through this, this third line is often where some people kind of get messed up, and, uh, and I understand that. So you're going to look at the first two terms, and you're going to ask yourself, okay, what do they have in common? And it's almost always a number, a, a, a coefficient, and it's a, uh, a variable, almost always, okay? So what do they have in common? That you can take both of those, you can divide them both by a 2 and an S, so I put a bracket like that, and then I'm going to divide them both by that. So 6s squared divided by 2s gives me a 3s, and the negative 4s divided by a 2s is a negative 2. Then I take the last two, and I ask myself, what can I common factor out of these last two? And if you're, if you're really with it, you're going, well, hold on, but there's nothing I can common factor out of them. So do I put nothing? Do I put a 0? No, you don't. There's always going to be something here, and you're going to notice something. If I divide this by a 1, since there has to be, my answer is going to end up being a binomial by a binomial when I'm all finished. So I'm going to put a plus 1 like this, and when I divide them both by a plus 1, look at how it's going to be the exact same thing. This is always, before you move on to the last line, you should be looking to say, okay, is what I have remaining in the both brackets the exact same? That's like a check mark in your brain. Oh, I think I did it right. Okay, now last step. I got it. It's kind of messed up a little bit, but you're going to, I said you're going to have a binomial by a binomial, 2s plus 1, and then 3s minus 2. And there you have it. You have factored it, and if you want to pause the video and check it by expanding, you can, or we can move on to this last question before uh, we call it a day. You've done well to stay with me this far. Okay, so in this particular question, um, a lot of times, uh, sometimes I'll forget that I have to check for um, a common factor in all of them, and I really, I didn't even, I just kind of jumped over that in my brain, didn't I, with this one. I should have asked myself, can I common factor them before I move on? Um, but this last, this last one, it's really kind of obvious to me because they're, first of all, they all the terms end with a zero, so obviously I can divide them all by 10, um, but when they're big numbers, big numbers uh, that are coefficients, I oftentimes go, oh, hold on, wait a second. 
that's unusual and so it usually triggers an alarm for me and says, wait a minute, can I common factor first? So in this case, I can divide them all by 10. So I'll put the 10 out in front and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to divide them all. So that leaves me with a 2r squared minus r minus 6. And at this point, this 10 is just going to keep on moving its way down all the way to the, to the final answer. But now what I've got remaining is that 2r squared minus r minus 6. And so I have to actually treat that as its own question. And I have to factor those tri that trinomial by itself. The 10, it's not like it's gone, but I've kind of I've fi figured it out. And now it's moved outside. And it just can, keeps moving down the side with me. So 2 times the negative 6, I'm looking for two numbers that give me a negative 12, and yet add together to give me a negative 1. Boy, that looks familiar. Is it the same one as this? Negative 4 and 3. And so uh, if I take this and I decompose that whole thing out, it's going to be very similar, isn't it? So then, what do these two have in common? They have a 2r in common, so that leaves me with an r minus uh, 2. Don't forget the 10 out here in the front. And then, what do these two have in common? They have a 3, so a positive 3, and that's going to be an r minus 2. And then, so my very last uh, line is going to be 10. Notice he kept coming to the bottom. Can you still see that? I haven't run out of space on there, have I? No, perfect. So then I'm going to have 2r plus 3. So notice what I common factored out is what goes into that first bracket. And then notice again, these two are the exact same, those two brackets. So I know I've done it right. And then you have fully factored that. Okay, well done. Again, please do not let this become some stressful thing for you. It's not meant to. Just do the best you can, watch the videos, and um, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to attach at the tail end of this the mock test. I want you to give that a try if you can. There's no time frame as to when you have to get it done. Um, when I see that there are several people who are ready for the next lesson, then I'm going to throw out the next lesson for you, and we'll keep moving like that. If that happens to be tomorrow, then we'll move it on for tomorrow. If it happens to be two or three days, then it'll be two or three days. It's not, it's not a big deal. Uh, don't, don't stress about it. I know some of you are working. Some of you are, are doing all kinds of different things. So again, it's just meant to be an opportunity for you to learn. So thank you very much for, for joining me. You'll notice my emails at the top here, tara.lawrence at mbed.mb.ca. After you finish with your mock test, if you want to email it back to me, then I will um, mark it, not for a grade, but just for some feedback so you have an idea of how you did, and, and then we'll move along to the next thing. So this is truly uh, learning for, for learning's sake, learning in the most pure way, because there are no marks that are involved here, and so that kind of takes takes that uh, element of it out and really looks at uh, how you view learning for your own for your own sake. So best of luck. Feel free to email me any questions and I will do the best I can to help you.